Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Fantasy World. Today I'm going to be reading the book called Winter House Room by Ben Gooderson with illustrations by Chloe Bristow. Today I'm going to be reading Chapter 11, which is called The Battle, Battle of Wits. And how to transform the word wits into the word time is wits, wind, wine, wire, tire, and time. And that's how you tra transform the word wits into the word time. Time. Thank you. Let's get right into it. As Elizabeth, as Elizabeth approached the entrance to Winter Hall for lunch, she stopped to examine the enormous murals and the family tree, and then she noticed within a painted scroll just beside the family tree a poem she had overlooked earlier. The peaks rise high, the north reels on, and mist obscure the sky where as one head denied the night the days of fall pass by in winter's tempo we remain but when fair spring returns soon summer's nitum sky and storm scented heavens burns oscar urn year and April I catch distance Zephyr's song the airy cloud does not wet hilltop the ancient night is long first light gong rang erased the dark the endless river crossed the pages penned in picture all where faith is never lost she thought of the poems she liked and where the sidewalk ends and some of the ones in Alice's Adventure in Wonderland. The poem on the wall above her seemed to make, didn't seem to make any sense, though as she read it and reread it, she felt a little bit the way she did when she was trying to solve a crossword puzzle, or even when she helped the two men with their Himalayan puzzle at the night before, as though they were something she might figure out. She examined the family tree itself for a moment, and she noticed something that seemed odd. Well over half the woman would would be counted for Marana, Morena, Claris, Serena, Lavina, Rowena, and Ravenna. Had loved to be exactly 100 years old. What are the odds of that? Elizabeth thought one of the few women who hadn't lived to a hundred was Norbridge's wife. What's that? That's strange, too. Another chime sounded, and she entered the hall to find Freddy, waiting for her where they sat at breakfast that morning. How would you like the library? he asked. She took a seat, and they began to talk. He told her about the progress he had made on his Walnut Wonderlog that morning, and she told him all about her time in the library, leaving out any mention of the book she found. When, uh, when their food arrived, she decided to ask Freddy about something that had been bothering her. Do you have to check in with Norbridge during the day? She said. Freddy was wondering through his bowl of beef barley soup quickly. Like, let him know where I am or something? Yeah. No. I mean, sometimes he wants to know what I'm up to. But it's not a regular thing. I just check in with him on our project. That's all. He pushed his glasses up on the bridge of his nose. What are you asking? Why are you asking? He asked me to check in with him twice a day, and I thought maybe it was something he did with you too. 
Freddy shook his head. No, maybe it's... His sentence trailed off. Elizabeth couldn't think what he might be about to say. What? Well, he knows who my parents are and all that. Maybe he just... I don't know. You said it's kind of mysterious how you got here. Maybe he just wants to make sure someone's looking out for you. Elizabeth wasn't sure that added up. And she thought maybe it was occurring to Freddy that there was something very different about the two of them. That he was rich and had parents while she was, well, opposite of rich and didn't have parents. For just a moment, she felt the way she often felt in Dreher. She was the niece of the poorest people in the town. You know, I went down to the library late last night, and I saw Norbridge in there at books, looking at books, she said. Putting thoughts of her aunt and uncle out of her mind, I could see him through the window as if he was looking for something. And he was kind of distracted, too, when he was showing me to my room. And then one of the bellhops called him away for something that seemed serious. Freddy closed his eyes for two seconds. You could turn serious into or issue, he said. Really, though, Elizabeth said. What do you think? Well, I think it's odd. Freddy said, two nights ago, I went down to the kitchen to get some flourishing because I couldn't sleep, and then all of a sudden, Norbridge turned the corner from the direction of the library. He looked surprised to see me. Elizabeth didn't know what to think. She hadn't even been at Wind House a full day. But if Freddy thought there was something odd about Norbridge visiting the library so late, at night, then maybe her intuition had been correct, and there really was something to wonder about. You think everything's okay, she said? She said, probably, Freddy said. He's always got a lot on his mind. It takes a lot to run Winter House. Elizabeth thought back to Norbridge, skimming through books and looking around with his flashlight. She decided to put it out of her mind for now. Freddy set his spoon down and held up a finger. Hey, I bought something, he said. And he reached into his pocket and pulled out some folded up pieces of paper and two pens. He set everything on the table. What is, what's this, Elizabeth said. Take a pen and some paper. Freddy said. He scooted his bowl and plate out of the way and then cleared Elizabeth's place as well. It's a wor it's word ladder competition time. Elizabeth felt instantly delighted. Ah, okay, she said. Time, item, my, your on. How do we do this? You forgot a mitt. Freddy said, and Elizabeth held up a fist in mock anger, but said nothing. Fred laughed as he unfolded a piece of paper and picked up a pen. Let's go. With three letter words to start, or else we'll be here until dinner. I'll choose the starting word, and you choose the ending word. And then we'll begin. First one to solve is the winner. Elizabeth took the other pen and piece of paper. Got it, she said. Got it, she said. Freddie wrote something at the top of his page and then held it up for Elizabeth to see. Ice. She wrote the word on her paper, thought for a moment, and then 
wrote a word near the bottom of her page, art. As she held it up for Freddy to see, she said, Ready, set, go! The two of them began writing furiously, jotting down words and scratching things out and scribbling away. Elizabeth's mind, Elizabeth's mind was flying through possibilities, and within two minutes, she found a path connecting the two words and yelled out, Done! Freddy shouted the same word at the same exact moment. At the exact same moment. The others at the table had stopped eating and were looking to the two of them with expectations. Elizabeth held her sheet up for Freddy to see. Ice. I, R, and art. He held up his in turn. Ice, ace, act, art. They began to laugh, and so did the others at the table. Different words, same result, Freddie said. Let's do another one, Elizabeth said. I'll choose. She sat thinking of three letter words that might lend themselves to the game and begin working her way through the alphabet and testing out possibilities in her mind. She be, Before she knew it, she had the word log and was written it on, and was written, writing it, it on her page. Freddy closed his eyes again, Hello. as though working through another anagram and then he opened them and said man one two three go they raced through a repeat of the first time and just as before they finished at the same moment elizabeth held up her page log bog bag ben and men and freddie held up his which read Log, lag, lad, and mad. And man. Twice in a row, Elizabeth said. You're too pretty, you two are pretty good at that. A woman at the table said she was about 30, 30 brown haired and slim, and she was holding the hand of the bearded man beside her. What are your names? Why don't you try doing that? Freddy's face brightened as he considered this. I'm Freddy, he said, but that's too long. Elizabeth was admiring the woman's blue velveteen blouse. And I'm Elizabeth, she said. So why don't you guys just go with Fred and Beth? The woman gave her husband a pleased look as though she helped the two kids resolve a dispute. And then she looked back at Freddy and Elizabeth and blurted out, Freddy, set, go! The two of them began writing furiously. Elizabeth saw right away that one of one way forward from Fred was the word feed, although fleed or free might have done as well. She decided to go with feet and pressed onward. From here, she tried out several words, feet, seat, and need. All were trying to mentally leap ahead one or two or three steps to see how to steer her words in the direction of Beth. She had just moved on to bees after, after going from fee to fees, when Freddy dashed off something with his pen, slapped his paper with an open palm, and called out, Done! And that, and we finished chapter 11. Get it? Done. We finished. And I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe button. If you want to see more videos like this, there's a notification bell too. 
And then that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace. Thanks for watching.